and um, and as you know, we are going to record our event. Uh, so, uh, dear viewers of our online event, dear Samuel Bach, our guest star, you are joining us from Boston. So, um, also, I'm happy to welcome head of Goethe Institute, Anna Maria Strauss. Um, also, the uh, director of ESCO Creative Agency, Lina Vigraite. Hello. Uh, and uh, we are also extend our greetings to the German ambassador in Vilnius, Matthias Zon, who was not able to join us live and has sent us video greeting. We want to express our gratitude to the German embassy in Vilnius uh, for making possible the translations of the interactive website, uh, Why Do We Need Art uh, about Samuel Bach artworks. So this uh, website now is available in German language. And in this way, uh, it will reach German speaking audiences uh, worldwide. Also, be before we are going to, to see this greeting, um, I want to give a short information about uh, um, some practical um, issues. Uh, and one of them is the interpretation. So um, if you are German speaking, uh, one of the German speakers, uh, you can uh, hear all our events directly translated into German language when you press interpretation button. And um, if uh, somebody is speaking in German uh, through the same interpretation button, which is also a globe icon on our lower um, part of this um, Zoom, uh, uh, page so uh, also you can hear the, the directly interpreted into English language. Uh, we are thanking to our interpreter Christopher Shepkus. Um, so uh, now um, I invite you to listen to the greeting uh, of the German ambassador to Lithuania, Matthew Son. Just as art can heal, uh, uh, dear Samuel Beck, uh, Ms. Schadzewina, uh, 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 the 16th of November is considered the International Day of Tolerance in many democratic countries. The fact that my embassy has the opportunity today to organize events together with the Vilna Gaon Museum and to present the website of the Samuel Back Museum in German and the mere fact that I was invited to greet the guests of this event is for me and for us Germans the greatest expression of tolerance. It went on Jewish history in Lithuania, speaking the first place as a representative of a country that uh, through brutal, brutal violence of the Nazi occupiers, and its centuries of Jewish history in Lithuania and the history of Vilnius as North Jerusalem. It is one of my main tasks uh, as German ambassador to Lithuania to acknowledge this responsibility. It is a heavy burden, but one which I shoulder willingly, because I know how important it is. It is especially important at the current time when because of Russia's unprovoked aggression in Ukraine, innocent people are being killed. And war uh, is being underpinned with feverish, deluded distortions of factual, factual history. These are the narratives that are well known to Germans from their own history. 
And we know it too well. Es erschüttert uns, weil wir geglaubt und gedacht hatten, dass die Menschheit in der Lage wäre, aus der Geschichte It shocks us because we both fought and believed that humanity ja. is capable of learning from the history of 1939, 1945. However, when we look back at the mirror of the past, uh, it's, it's very important. It took us Germans about 40 years. And the younger generation asking their grandparents for difficult questions for historical responsibility to be properly understood. That's why we Germans strongly believe deep conviction that we need to confront the horrors, the horrors of our own past. Unspeakable brutality that Nazi German inflicted on millions of fellow Europeans with straightforward and flinching honesty. Only by taking this path can we confidently move forward as a democratic country and an open society. Only by acknowledging the full history of the country can we heal the wounds of the past. So those, those are the lessons which we as Germans have learned. Thank you again for cooperation and the opportunity to contribute to this event. Thank you very much. Thank you to His Excellency uh, German Ambassador to Lithuania. Um, and um, continuing the topic, what uh, he already touched, uh, I also would like to add that today we face the outbreak of a war against Ukraine and all democratic society. And it's even more important to commemorate um, the International uh, Day of Tofo Tolerance, what is today and to speak about initiative tolerance through art, which is also the motto of Samuel Back Museum, and hoping to stand for the values of the free Western world. Today, we also celebrate the fifth anniversary of the Samuel Back Museum. Uh, back in 2017, uh, the exposition with the artworks of Samuel Back Museum was opened uh, within the premises of the Vilna Gaon Museum of Jewish History Former Tolerance Center, which was named under the name of Samuel Bach back in 2021. Um, since the museum collections safe keep a larger amount of the artworks of Samuel Bach, the big exhibition is planned for 2023, then Samuel Bach will celebrate his 90th anniversary. Um, so you, everybody, heard about uh, Samuel Bach, but I want to, to rem remember, maybe to remind that Samuel Bach is a Vilna Ghetto survivor and the prominent Litvak artist. And um, he is the artist expressing his experiences and the philosophy of life in his artworks. He creates the artworks hoping that they will, be, will become the educational tools and the tools for the contemplation uh, also, they become the tools for healing for those who were affected by war. And we will speak more on this topic later on. Uh, so, um, since uh, we already touched uh, the topic of uh, art as educational tool, I would like uh, to invite, uh, to say a greeting word, the head of the Goethe Institute in Lithuania, Anna Maria Strauss. Thank you so much. Hello, everyone. Dear Samuel Bach, dear Eva Shatovicjena, dear all. First of all, um, congratulations to five years of the Samuel Bach Museum. Um, Thank you. What a great occasion to be celebrating. And I have to say I'm very humbled to be invited today to say a few words. Um, and I would like to thank you, Eva, and also to the Vilna Gaon Museum of Jewish History for the invitation. And it really is my honor and privilege to speak here and um, 
I hope my words will give everyone listening or all of you um, something that resonates and that they manage to be a little bit meaningful to you. And um, I know the title of this discussion overall is Art, a Therapy for the Affected by War. I chose to not speak about art as a therapy though, but I would like to address directly the very question that the beautiful website raises, that is, why do we need art? I think that's a very important topic to reflect on. And this question makes me think of many people, first of all. It makes me think of my friend and uh, a colleague, uh, Grace Sambo. Uh, she's a curator based in Jakarta, Indonesia, and who I remember saying when she was asked, I, I don't remember or recall by whom, uh, why she's working in the arts. And uh, she said that the arts are the only field that really allow her to draw and explore connections and topics without limitation, without limitations of methods, of the boundaries of a specific field of work or of academic rules. And I was thinking how badly we do need this thinking and associating freely and drawing new connections and putting things into unexpected contexts also to find new ways to form our thoughts and also to live our lives and to engage with the world, especially now. The question makes me also think of all the friends and the artists I know whose art is just their way of being in the world, right? I mean, of making sense of their surroundings, their way of communicating with people also. Um, it makes me think of Natasha Tonti. She's an amazing young visual artist um, who I had the honor to invite and a company on a trip alongside other artists to, to Ruhr Triennale, a contemporary art uh, and performance festival in Germany, and who, uh, when we had this small round of introductions where everyone is just saying what they're working on, what, what their life and art is about, she, she had prepared a little note with the things that she wanted to say about herself because she felt very insecure and uncomfortable talking about herself. And she also talked maybe two minutes maximum, while many others clearly, you know, felt up to the occasion and uh, took a lot of time. And while speaking in that situation really wasn't for her, she creates the most amazing and witty and fun and complex video works that really invite you to whole new worlds of knowledge and aesthetic. And you would never know by, you know, if you had a different kind of interaction, but seeing this, this is just her way of expression. And you will immediately know her beautiful soul and her incredible wit when you see her artwork. And the question also, it makes me think of many times that I have myself stood in an exhibition or experienced maybe a piece of music or immersed myself in a different kind of um, art experience and felt I had a moment of true connection and understanding of something that has been, you know, that had been close to me before. And sometimes you cannot even say what it ex exactly it is that you're understanding, right? And sometimes it will also only grow on you many years later. And you will only know much later that you're a different person now and that you have a new understanding specifically because you were changed by that very specific encounter. It also makes me think of, of stories as an existential tool of existing as a human being in this world, of our need to create meaning, to tell stories, to form community and make ourselves understood. And I think we, we might fail often, but we keep trying. And that's I think that's just our human condition. And it also makes me think of my children who, who draw little drawings of people they know. You know, why do we make art of things that they did or, or who paint for the sheer joy of seeing a bold color come to life on a paper or for the pure joy of being able to choose the color that is coming next. Um, and also out of curiosity to see what, what new world might start to take form in front of their eyes. And asking why we need art, actually, it also made me think um, of the late Agnes Heller, the great philosopher from, from Hungary, a Jewish woman, a Holocaust survivor too, who said the meaning of life is to live it. And I was thinking in a way, the meaning of art in our lives is to be able to make art to be able to have this amazing way to express ourselves and to explore new ways of thinking and to see things that were not apparent before. Um, 
and to, to get in touch with the world that we live in and the people that live on the world with us and in this world with us. And as I said before, I do believe that expression and expressing yourself is a basic human need and that being allowed and able to vulnerably do so is a, is a huge privilege in situations. But it just makes us more whole. You make yourself maybe seen in a way that otherwise you cannot make yourself seen. And this in itself just makes you more whole. Now, I said I won't be speaking on art as a therapy, and I think I'm not, but I do also believe that the connection is very evident. And I'm not, you know, I'm, I wouldn't be the person to be speaking on that topic specifically. But I think even when I was reflecting on it and this little stream of associations that I had already made it quite clear to me that there is this evident connection that you will be exploring more. And the power of art to make us more whole, not, not whole, of course, but, but more whole, maybe just a tiny little bit more whole. I think that is a thought. Als Leute voll zu machen. Und ich glaube, dass wir können jetzt auch. And honored to be sharing this space with you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. So, uh... Also, before starting our discussion with Samuel Bach, um, I would like to invite uh, Lina Vigrete, director of the ESCO Creative Agency and uh, our Longevos partner uh, to, to, to speak about the website and to give uh, for those who uh, do not know anything about uh, our website, to, go, to give some uh, practical also tools, how to use it and how it looks like. So. Lena, the floor is yours. Hello, thank you very much for letting me be here and also share a space with you. Thank you. Uh, not to forget and to remember, this is, I'm here and we are here for, and uh, this is uh, why actually we did it with museum. We put Samuel back online, <laughs> not here, but in this website. Well, Samuel Back already Eva mentioned is a world-renowned artist, and thank you. I'm honored to be here with you today. Who actually survived the denisification of World War II? He is an honorary citizen of Vilnius and has a wonderful museum named after him in Vilnius, which celebrates now five years. And there, Samuel, you are speaking from the walls with us for all those five years, uh, but. There is a distance to this museum, which we measure in steps or in kilometers. What in this fast moving consumer world uh, uh, world and uh, uh, with, this, with the youth, which eyes are most of the time on the screen, uh, can, be, can become an obstacle, this uh, distance, you know, to reach people. And uh, it can be a serious obstacle, despite the unforgettable experience and feelings you explore and uh, go through when physically attending your museum in Vilnius. So we put you online, Samuel, and I will show you where. Maybe somebody uh, didn't see, didn't see. Mm -hmm. Okay, hopefully it's all working now. And we are in online, we are online uh, in, uh, in the address Samuel Manus dot Samuel Lizbakas dot LT, which is in Lithuania and the name and surname of, uh, of Samuel Back. And uh, uh, here we uh, see Samuel Back's art and his reflection of the world in, in one click way, which is not measured in kilometers or in, in, in steps. And here we have an opportunity to uh, explore or have a sole interpretation of your art or a discussion. Uh, I will maybe sh uh, just shortly show the, the title, the title uh, front, front page of, of this uh, online interactive lecture. It is in, I will show in English, but in honor of, to know that we have a uh, translation in German. Uh, we have, uh, with all, all the website, all this interactive uh, lecture translated there. 
I will switch to English for me to understand more. So why do we need art? Uh, we meet our audiences with this question and uh, uh, we have a different uh, opinions. Why, would, why do we need it? And just recently, one of the reasons why do we need it is make us think. Yes, uh, it, there was the expression that was repeatedly there to this question. And uh, we have a, a short introduction of Samuel Buck and we have here, I will show later uh, the interactive tools, how to explore it. So this is the title page of this online tool. As a creative agency, we use uh, uh, media to create a dedicated tools as one as this is to communicate and to spread the message in the way it affects and attracts the audiences. And we have to know the audience. So we transfer Samuel Beck's work to digital screens, inviting youth and all of us actually uh, um, to see and hear it using the digital means. An important note now and also in German, also soon to be Ukrainian too. It is an online tool that helps to embrace and learn history through art, through Samuel Beck art. Uh, art helps to speak and uh, this tool helps to teach and reach our minds, helping us always discover humanness in ourselves, no matter who or where the fear is and whatever he says to us. So I believe uh, Samuel's back, back's artwork strengthens our natural immune system so we can differentiate between what's right and what's wrong and make our own brave decisions. Not to forget and to remember, neither art nor intelligence will be too much. Uh, I know uh, the teachers also were invited to this uh, presentation, and we did some presentations to our Lu Lithuanian teachers, uh, and uh, uh, but maybe we have some here. So I will gladly show a quick tour how to use this and how to how to consume Samuel Beck's uh, art on in digital on digital uh, by digital means. Uh, which can be done uh, through teaching, maybe in class or as a solo interpretation, as I've mentioned. Um, so why, why do we need art? We have different answers to that, but we have some ready already for discussion. So art shows why do we need art? Maybe art shows what really matters and helps appreciate simple things. Art rebalances, art makes us less lonely, feel less lonely, or art makes us hopeful. And uh, here we have, can explore it more. Um, in this online tool, we've prepared in an interactive uh, matrix, uh, the system, how we speak with the audience, uh, show them art, uh, ask questions and uh, stimulate discussion. So we have five themes I've already mentioned, and this is one of it is art makes us hopeful. And we have nine symbols here, uh, which Samuel Bach uses uh, in his art and uh, through them, he speaks to us, interprets, it, interprets them and uh, uh, gives us an idea and, uh, uh, for what he thinks. Uh, going through it, we, we, have, uh, we have our um, paintings of Samuel Bach and uh, which represents one of this, those nine symbols. For example, here we have a peer symbol and we have uh, an idea how peer symbol, how peer might uh, uh, through Samuel Bach art makes, make, make us feel less uh, uh, hope, or more hopeful, feel us more hopeful. We can look at our painting, we can zoom it, uh, we can uh, read and think. So which interpretation of the symbol gives us more hope? And then we can discuss ourselves or in class and choose. Paradise, although paradise is lost, there is still hope that we can return there. So that's interpretation. So that's why do we need to so das hilft uns auch verstehen, wozu brauchen wir Kunst? Wie gibt es uns auch? Peer is re re reminiscent of a one beauty, and this sight always gives hope and optimism. And always we have a four uh, decisions to make. So I will make this time this one, and we'll go to another symbol where we have also a, a, a discussion to happen. 
about uh, through this symbol key and the painting that is presented by Samuel Bach. We have here 45 paintings uh, which are not in Vilnius Museum, which cannot be seen there uh, physically. Uh, and uh, 20 and 20 uh, paintings uh, that can be seen and actually is on the walls of the museum in Vilnius. So it also gives us this online tool gives us a broader uh, ability to look at uh, um, at Samuel Bach's painting, see more of them than we are able to do it in in Vilnius uh, in in the museum. So key, I will choose another, uh, make another decision why it makes me uh, hopeful. And this way I go through the nine symbols, see nine paintings in this theme, make my decision, think, art make us think. And uh, this is the matrix. I will go through all of it, make nine my nine decisions. Mm -hmm. And I have a final picture and at nine step. I have a final picture where if I make when I make my uh, uh, decision, uh, I have final painting uh, coming up uh, saying that I have successfully completed the theme and uh, with an invitation to visit Samuel Bach Museum and the painting which is shown here is actually physically in this museum. So it's always uh, one of four. It depends on your answers. It is one of four uh, paintings that will come up, show up at the end of this uh, of this lesson, let's say, for you to look at it, to think, and maybe go to the museum. So that was very quick. Is there anything to add? Maybe there's anything to add, Eva. Thank you, Lena. I think that uh, you already showed the main uh, matrix, as you mentioned, the, how we use the, uh, this website. And uh, but it's uh, what we saw. This is like uh, five percent of the websites. Since to to go through all the symbols in uh, all five categories, uh, you you need several hours if you want to study everything that we uploaded to the website. Uh, or you can uh, choose your days, let's say on Sundays, go and ahead and study each uh, uh, category. Uh, so I think uh, it gives more information about the artworks of Samuel Bach and um, uh, gives a broader perspective. So uh, we are very happy that we cooperated with uh, ESCO Creative Agency since we started to do it from the very beginning uh, because video guide was made by uh, Lina and, and her team uh, uh, back in 2017. So we continue to, to work and uh, but, yeah, this uh, also I'm taking uh, you know, opportunity to announce that we have translated the website also in Ukrainian language. Uh, at this very moment, it's still not available, uh, but very soon uh, we also, the Ukrainians can uh, join us uh, online and uh, can have uh, even educations, uh, ho hopefully with this virtual tour. Uh, so, but it's uh, the topic of another discussion. And um, uh, now, uh, maybe I go back already to, to Samuel back and, and uh, to say a, a very, very short forward of, uh, of what I was thinking about, uh, about the discussion uh, that we are going to have uh, right now. So uh, I have, of course, contemplated through my own experience. Uh, and um, I just uh, want to address Samuel back that, uh, dear Samuel, uh, you know, your artwork uh, is the testimony of the atrocities of World War II. And um, they gain completely new meaning when we face the war against Ukraine. And uh, my generation uh, today, 40 plus years of age, uh, we were young teenagers when Lithuania became the independent state. And uh, we grew up with a vision of no ending and expanding democracy of the Western world, which have opened in front of us. 
uh, World War II, the Holocaust, and the Soviet occupation years were something what was left behind us in the lives of our grandparents and parents. Uh, despite the fact that myself, I was 13, when Lithuania became independent, but um, or it was January. I remember that it was January, um, you know, 13, uh, this, this day, and, and I was 13. So, but uh, I, I still lived, I was born in Soviet Union, but it was my childhood years. And so I did not maybe contemplate it on the politics. Uh, so uh, for me, um, everything very soon became, uh, became the past. So um, suddenly, suddenly, this year, we testify that world uh, did not change, unfortunately. Uh, after numerous of years of saying no more again and no, no more war, we face the mass graves of tortured people in Ukraine. Uh, the women and even children are being raped by the occupant soldiers. And everything is happening now. Missiles are falling now, uh, leaving thousands of wounded by war, if not physically, but emotionally. And uh, here we can go back to the topic of, of uh, your artwork. Could you tell us? How the symbols you have used to illustrate the personal experiences of the war and Holocaust relate to the nowadays topics in Ukraine? For example, such symbols as chimneys or the sinking ships. Well, uh, uh, let me first of all tell you that I am extremely grateful and really moved to see uh, my work uh, being used for such a an important, very important, and you mainly very, very, uh, uh, <laughs> I'm, I, I am at a loss for words to say um, how it is, because um, uh, art uh, of paintings, which in, in some way seems to be today, when you think of all the young artists that go into videos, that go into cinema, that uh creating paintings becomes almost an archaic uh, uh, expression but yet there is something wonderful about paintings that they do not have the dimension of time you can look at a painting you can think about it you can project yourself into it you take your time and therefore they have a certain power that other things, when you look at images on the screen, they pass very quickly and you do not have the time to reflect about them, only afterwards in your memory, while the paintings remain there and you can get back to them and so on. So there, there, is, there is something about that. Um, I think that underlying all my paintings is the presence of a war that was in the past. I mean, I will, cannot go too much into the question of the therapy of art because I'm too much involved in it. <laughs> art has been a, a therapy for me. And when I moved from doing abstractions, when I was about 30, 35 years of age, to um, the creation of a, a very uh, visually familiar world, almost realistic and unrealistic at the same time, it is because I felt that I had a lot that I wanted to say, that I wanted to speak in the name of the people who went through disasters, who uh, decided that in spite of everything, life goes on and hope should never be lost. Hope is a very important element that um, that makes us function. And um, uh, I uh, began somewhere with uh, very much the uh, participation of my subconscious to deal with it, but not in a very uh, didactic way uh, which usually wipes out the mystery, which is in art. So we have always to take it, you know, with a little, um, uh, I, I, I would say, respect, 
for, for the mystery, which is not always very clearly explainable. But let me say that um, when I was a kid, first of all, war seemed to me something fascinating. Our house suddenly filled up with refugees from Warsaw. And these were very interesting people. And even if I uh, had to give up my room and they, uh, <laughs> and they invaded the house, we had those wonderful evenings where people were talking about what is going on in the world and so on. Usually uh, most of these people were waiting uh, to get a passport from uh, Kaunas, from um, the Japanese consul Sugihara. And, uh, and then the Russian authorities arrived. And the Russian authorities threw out my mother's parents from their house because a general took care of it to live there. And my mother's um, uh, parents went to live with my father's parents. So I thought war is fantastic, it's wonderful. It just makes all my dreams come true. I have my four parents in, um, in one place. And um, I, uh, I, I, I was really a very spoiled child. And then, and then the, the, the occupation of, um, the, uh, of Germany. And then uh, my two grandfathers went to buy bread and never returned. They were taken from the street to, to Ponari and shot. And my two grandmothers were taken out from the ghetto uh, and the two, together they were shot in Ponari. So suddenly I realized that, well, war, war is a terrible, terrible, terrible thing. And I must say that with time, I have really learned what happened to me. I really understood what the Holocaust was. When I was in the Holocaust, I never realized it. But then I was uh, among the refugees of Europe. Uh, I remember us struggling to get on a train. The trains were evacuating people. Millions of people were evacuated. Millions of people were transformed from one place to another. And suddenly we were all the same and not having a ground under your feet was kind of normal. We were moving from one place to another for, on trains that took us weeks to be on them. And we went, so we, we uh, my mother decided to escape from the occupied um, the venues by the Russians because suddenly I was um, discovered as a very gifted child and I was supposed to be taken away from my mother. I was the only thing that remained to her. <laughs> and, and I was supposed to be taken out uh, away from her and brought to some school for geniuses in Moscow and so on. We had to escape. So we escaped there. We were in a camp of refugees in, um, in uh, Germany and then from Germany, we went um, to Israel, Israel, as we were refugees in Israel in some way before we started to feel a little at home. And Israel was created of refugees and, uh, and so on. And, and I must say that my entire life was somehow spent with my eyes open to refugees. So now there hardly a day passes that I do not see the horrors of the war in Ukraine. The television provides it to me. And I feel almost <laughs> a, 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 a neurotic sense of responsibility to look at these images, to remember them, to see the people suffering. When you know, when I was very young, I was told the story of how the Ukrainians uh, misbehaved. Um, misbehaved is, of course, uh, an understatement. How they were very active against the, um, the Jewish population, sometimes undertaking pogroms even before the German army arrived. And kidding. But all this became part of, you know, the human history. Human history has all kinds of ugly 
things. And today the refugees that I see that I see on the television are, are just humans who suffer terribly. And I can hardly ever watch the news without tears in my eyes because all these are innocent people that have been um, that have been indoctrinated like this or indoctrinated like that and so on and they are looking at the world and not understanding why it is that they have lost everything that they dedicated their life uh, to build it is um, i mean we are going through these frightening uh, moments of 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 seeing the, the 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 crime of forgetting you know for me the the, the holocaust is not only a, a, a story of a Jew, of a jewish tragedy uh, the holocaust for me is the laboratory the most the, uh, the, the i would say uh, the most perfect laboratory to see what to what human beings can be brought to do. It is a kind of laboratory of the human condition. And it, it teaches us that the best and the worst exists in practically every human being. And it is the way we are uh, educated and indoctrinated and, 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 and um, the way our eyes are open to certain series of values. All this teaches us to to be humane and um, therefore I, I i personally believe that teaching what has happened in the holocaust is a fantastic tool for education because i don't remember i think it was napoleon who said the people who do not uh, learn from the experience of other people are fools and uh, learning what has happened in the um, time of 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 the, of the of the black years of the Holocaust is extremely important, and it is difficult because if you look at the images of the dead that bulldozers switch from one place to another, uh, it makes you close your eyes; you just cannot watch it, and so on. But for me, when I realized I was about uh, 30, it was more than a half a century ago, <laughs> that after all, I had to put aside my research for shapes, for for brushstrokes, for um, abstract um, events, and so on, on my canvases, and try to tell my story. Because storytelling is the most important thing that exists in among humans i mean in stories we reflect on what is good on what is bad on what is um, uh, on what we wish to have and we create values and we can can tell stories in all kinds of ways we can do it mimicking we can do it in pantomime we can do it in films we can do it in 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 art that has its own dimension because its timelessness allows us to reflect the storytelling is the most important thing and what i'm doing my storytelling of course is also doing something for the people i lost this is for me let's say a certain therapy of accepting of acceptance and i am trying to tell my father i'm trying to tell my grandparents look this little boy that you so very much uh, expected from is is doing something so that that your suffering won't be completely forgotten so therefore i changed the way i'm painting and i'm doing things that intrigue people that make them wonder what they mean, that make them ask questions. And if these uh, works ask, uh, make them ask questions, well, it is the need beyond myself of a collaboration and help of other people like yourself to make them help to get to the answers that point to the right direction. 
it's very meaningful, you know, your, your words are very meaningful. And um, actually, um, one of uh, the threats, the main threats in your artworks also uh, is the fact that you are inspired by the words of Tikkun Olam, repairing the world after the catastrophe, which also goes back to the idea that the world is constantly breaking and repairing itself. So uh, how this idea can relate to the personal healing with the help of creativity and art? I, I just didn't get the, 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 the point of your question. Can you, it, it's not your fault, it's a little the fault of the uh, age. Okay, year. I will repeat my, again. Uh, uh, so uh, regarding the idea of uh, repairing the world and also the fact that, that maybe this Kabbalistic idea of world is that is the world is constantly breaking and then it's starting yeah. to repair yeah. yourself the you repair yourself. yes uh, so, it, so, uh, so yeah, how yeah. this yes how this idea can relate to the personal healing with the help of creativity and art yeah yeah well uh you know there is this ancient um jewish um myth um the of the broken vessels that float in the space and 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 uh, the uh, the human um, uh, responsibility is to repair those uh, vessels. Well, it it brought to reality the work of repairing uh, is a very uh, very important word. It's called a tikkun, and a tikkun olam in Hebrew, which means the repairing of the world. And uh, this idea of repairing is, of course, uh, uh, something that I have witnessed, that I have lived through. I mean, um, I um, moved uh, as a refugee, as a homeless person, as somebody who didn't know where to put his roots. I was brought to Israel. It was in a certain way a reparation. I started studies and so on. Um, we lived among survivors, uh, people who lost their wives, husbands, children, got together, tried to recreate families. They were all broken people. They were all people that brought into those newly recreated families of broken people. They brought ho uh, ghosts. I mean, I lived with my father, my stepfather who lost his wife and two children, and my mother, who, who never fell out of love with the husband that she lost. I mean, we live with their ghosts together, but apparently... ...whole, and, and many things seem to be put of bits and pieces that belong from some other places, but they are put together in order to pretend to be here. A, a cup with uh, some uh, chocolate in it uh, and, uh, uh, by my grandmother. So, um, yes, the repair is a very, very, very important thing. And I saw today of Ukraine are dreaming of the days in which they will be able to return to their country and begin repairing the um, uh, homes that have been uh, destroyed. But I must say the repair should always uh, be done with the idea of our acceptance that there is something broken in the world, that there is something broken and, and, and we live among, among broken things and we have, uh, we have to accept them. Um, so I see that uh, our time uh, going uh, to the end, but also also before before maybe some uh, our participants uh, will have some questions for for us for for Samuel Bach. I also would like to share the experiences 
of uh, what I was told that uh, some uh, of those uh, people who now live in Vilnius and they uh, became um, also running from war from Ukraine, that we already had visited your museum and uh, they experienced that uh, your art um, can, can help to contemplate what is happening during the war. So uh, this is... Uh, this was said to us by our also educator, Elizaveta, who is, who is from Ukraine and working with your art. And I hope she's listening uh, to, to, our, to our talk right now. So, uh, and she's going to dig deeper into the subjects and uh, to reach out for bigger audiences. And so um, it's very important that uh, if, even a single person can be healed with the help of art, uh, or creating art or experiencing art, contemplating on art. Uh, it's already a big step forward because I think that uh, our happiness, uh, it, it's everything starts from our head. So uh, as you Absolutely. mentioned that you can create some sort of, yeah. some sort of, uh, stable land and stability if if you have some background in so uh, well maybe it would be the outcome of, of what we talked so uh, now i hope that uh, we have uh, some someone who still like to give the question for samuel back please do not be shy usually everybody is very shy when listening to well you heard me talking you know that i I'm just like yourself. I'm well, human. <laughs> That's all. So, if you have any 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 questions, I will be very, certainly very, very happy to answer. But uh, let me tell, let me reassure you that I feel incredibly, incredibly privileged to be able to uh, help with my work, create a human communication between the people that explain my art or or introduce my art to, to others and they start a conversation because what is most important in the human experience is the ability of exchanging ideas of having a conversation of feeling empathy of the other so in that way my art is only a kind of can be only a trigger I, I, I do not think that it contains, you know, some magic power of healing, but if it helps, if it helps to begin a conversation with somebody else, if it helps to convey the sense that uh, other people have gone through terrible loss and yet have remained alive and yet we're able to continue life and so on. This can bring a certain reassurance. It can bring a certain reassurance about the uh, power of, 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 of existing in, 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 in a world in which, you know, as it was said before, the meaning of life is life itself. And, um, and being, and being somebody who has the incredible privilege and luck of bringing you my 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 product and having it on your walls and having people react to it i mean this is an artist's dream come true so what there is not uh, so much we more. have one raised hand and it's mirolanda uh, so mirolanda go ahead and pass your question Hi Samuel, Hi. I am very, Hi. very happy to, to see you, see you yeah. and hear you, especially in, in, in discussion about art as a therapy. Yeah. There is uh, some, some symbol, symbolic coincidence because right now I am reading uh, the book Art as a Therapy written by uh, Alan, Alan Botton and John Armstrong. And dear Samuel, I remember my intention, my, my intention to volunteer in your museum. I, I, I talk, talked about it five years ago, but I didn't yet. But now maybe I think it's uh, the time to fulfill my, my promise because I retired from my direct workplace and 
now I am working as a volunteer, therefore I have a time and maybe it will come true. And my, my best regards to Jose. Thank you so much. It was great seeing you here. And it, I remember very fondly our meeting in Vilnius. I wish I could promise you that I will come, but, but I think that for the two of us... I hope that I can also come to Vilnius to visit you, but for us both it's hard to travel. Because... She broke a vertebra. Yes, and the foot is broken. Uh, Eine Vertebra und äh, das ist nicht eine einfache Sache. Is everything okay? Something happened with the uh, translation? Or... Mm -hmm. uh, sorry? So I was just saying the two of us, uh, also because I am almost 90, and uh, you understand that traveling undertaking undertaking much um, uh, energy consuming uh, efforts is not really something you can do. So, but but we are doing fine. It's mainly um, that in the heads we are still there. <laughs> so, um, we also have a question, written question. Uh, Samuel, how often do you visit Lithuania? What you can suggest to your museum visitors in Vilnius? Well, uh, as I explained before, for me, travel now is very difficult. Uh, I, I, I will just have to find a doctor who gives me the permit. <laughs> but um, uh, I am very, very lucky that Zoom exists, the one, the, um, one that we are using now. I am using with my family every Sunday. And every Sunday, my family that is spread between uh, uh, South Africa, uh, Switzerland, and uh, Italy, and uh, France. We all get together on the screen, and we are all together with Zoom. And this is, uh, uh, this is absolutely fantastic that we can uh, relate not only to them, but also to their dogs and their cats and um, and really have the feeling that we are together and we are spread over the globe in an incredible way. So traveling, fortunately for me, is not, is not anymore this must. Of course, I would have loved to go, but um, you see, I am uh, only 30 minutes from the Museum of Fine Arts. And um, the, two days ago, when I gave a presentation there and so on, just going there, when the whole thing was over, and it was very successful and people were very happy and so on. Oh, I, feel like I felt exhausted. And I only had 30 minutes to take me home. So, uh, and I did not even drive myself. I mean, I was driven home. So, so uh, there is something that one has to understand about age and energy and... Um, uh, I still can reassure you that I paint seven days a week and I paint for about at least six hours a day. So, uh, and there are about thousands of images that float around in my head. And uh, I feel that I would have needed another 200 years at least to put them out. So, but my catalog is on there, as you well know, contains already 9,200 works. I hope, I hope to get to the number 10,000, so. Um, also, uh, someone now, a German uh, listeners, uh, they are asking, uh, and I, you know, this is what somebody translated to me, the question, uh, would you paint a picture on request? <laughs> no, I don't paint, I don't paint paintings on request. I am very, very lucky that all the requests for my uh, paintings come somehow from here. And, uh, and they all have to do with issues of our condition, of our human condition. Because I know, I know there is one very basic thing that happened to humanity about uh, 10,000 or 100,000 years ago. 
people felt that they feel better when they are together. And this kind of um, uh, being together in groups and starting to identify themselves as groups and uh, was very often uh, enforced this feeling by other groups that maybe were aggressive. Maybe they wanted the same cave and so on. So there is in our human condition an underlying uh, strata that we must to control because this idea of nationalism, the idea of having power over others, the idea of some individuals knowing what is good for other individuals is embedded in each one of us, but it can be put into action like what Mr. Putin is doing in Ukraine. And it can also be put into action by people who say, no, every human being on the globe has the same right for life. Every, I mean, race does not exist. Race is something that absolutely does not exist. And if we get to understanding that, we already make an important um, um, step so um you see i have a lot of a lot of thing in in, in my head that still are uh, looking for expression and um and i am very privileged i am very lucky i am able to paint what i think is important and i there is this big music back museum and learning center that will open in the in omaha in the university of nebraska and I very lately uh, felt that there were some major uh, subjects that they did not have. So in order to give them the gift of completing this, I painted some large canvases, which will be now that my exhibition in Boston, but after that, the paintings will go, will go there. And these are all gifts that I'm, that I'm giving as I was, I was uh, very lucky to be able to make the gift to you and you have um, a good number of works of mine. Uh, I think about almost about 150, if not more. A little bit and, less. And we have, uh, of course, more to count with your childhood drawings from Pinterest. Yeah, yeah. So and and you most... have also some paintings yes, that, I still, that I still hear that we have to find a way of sending over to yes. you. And yes. I may I may include in it uh, more recent works of other themes. That, yes. Uh, so we will have we will have to work that. But uh, I'm I'm now at an age in which it is very important to me, as I already told a couple of times. I feel such an incredible, incredible sense of gratitude. To the circumstances of my life that they made me survive and then they made me be able to tell my story sharing something of what is what is commonly uniting us um, humanly so that the paintings that i painted that put food on my table i'm grateful to them but i feel that somehow the general output of my art should not belong to 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 to, to somebody privately it really belongs to all the people and all the places that would use this material for the creation of a communication with others. So this is why by now, I think I have given away almost a thousand of my works to different institutions and different places, knowing simply that by that, I will reach a, a, some other people and contribute somehow to, to, to what is so important is is human is human exchange of idea conversation and so on so i'm very grateful and i i definitely would like to thank you for such an enlightening uh, discussion and also 
just, you know, we are very happy that you are active and even painting uh, more and painting seven weeks uh, per day. And I think that uh, this is uh, just incredible. And uh, we hope we are going to have more such uh, connections with you via Zoom since uh, you are not able to come physically to Vilnius. And uh, one more is we waiting is when we are going to present a website. We are going to have it and I already invite everybody to follow our uh, museum uh, Facebook account. Uh, also, you will receive information on uh, newsletter. We, you know, nice and effective also outcome awaits for us in 2023. Yes. Uh, so let's uh, stay positive uh, and uh, let's hope that uh, also the war will be ended next year and uh, we can be more in, in more light mood. Next year, we would celebrate the International Day for Tolerance and the sixth anniversary of Samuel Beck Museum. And I, uh, for all that, you know, Zoom, email, and so on can be very useful. And I'm absolutely uh, open to all the help that I can bring in your work of preparing all that. You know, it's very easy to reach me. So and thank I'm you so very, much. Very, very happy to be. Now I feel I'm feeling that I am in Vilnius. Actually, I am with you in the same room. And yes, yes, it gives this feeling, and we are happy that you are sharing your time with us. And I know that you had to get up very early to in order to join us for our afternoon uh, Zoom meeting. So. Yeah. Thank you for your even earlier <laughs> time than ever. So, thank you very um, much. Thank you all yeah. who are listening and um, getting something from this program. Thank you so much. Thank you. So, thank you. I'm saying goodbye then to everybody. Goodbye to everyone. Bye. All the best to you. All